Welcome, final part of ELEC 142 Problem Sheet 1 Solutions. Um, this is the final part, part 3, and in this we're just going to answer question 7, which is a little bit wordier, it's a bit less of a just sol solving math maths, it's um, getting you to think a bit more about what's going on. So here we're told sinusoidal waveforms in figure 2 show a sample signal which is the input and output signals of a guitar amplifier. V in of T is the input voltage and V out of T is the output voltage. So labeling quite sensibly. It's like in programming. Make sure you label your variables if you're in charge of labeling them with something that represents what's actually going on. It makes things a lot easier. So you're asked what is the gain and what is the phase of the output relative to the input. And you're also told note the two separate vertical axes. So we've got time along the bottom here in seconds. And then what we've got up here is two different vertical axes. So the one on the left corresponds to the amplitude of V out of T in volts. And this goes from minus 6 volts to positive 6 volts. And on the other side, we've got the scale for the amplitude of V in of T in volts. So this is our input signal. And note, this goes from minus 0.15 volts to positive 0.15 volts. So this is a much smaller value and the two graphs are plotted on the same paper. So just look carefully at what you're studying and make sure you're getting a sensible answer. Also, you've been told that it's a guitar amplifier. So if you're getting an output value which is smaller than your input value, you have probably done something wrong. So just again, just have a check of your answers and make sure you think they're sensible. So first of all, we're going to calculate the gain. Gain is quite a simple thing to do. The gain is always going to be the output over the input. In this case, we're working with voltages. So we can say our output voltage over our input voltage. And we just read these values off of the graph. So from this graph, we can see that V out, so we're reading from this axis over here, the maximum value of this is 6 volts. So we've got that, and V in, we want to look at this axis over here. We can see that the maximum value here, if we come along, is 0 0.1 volts. So that's quite a lot smaller. So just to calculate the gain, we do the output over the input, which, because we're dividing volts by volts, we actually cancel our units. So we have a gain of 60, and there are no units associated with this Gain. So that's the first part of the question done. And we're thinking about it, it's sensible, we've got a much bigger output than we do input. If you think about your guitar, you're supplying a very small signal, which is being amplified by the amplifier into a much louder signal. Next up, we're going to find the phase. So this is something that is doing it graphically is a little bit harder to do. We went through this in an earlier part of the problem, so this is just giving, asking you to do it without having sort of step-by-step -step guides through it. So what we're interested in is the difference between equivalent points on the say, on the on the different waveforms. So here I'm actually looking at the maximum values, the maximum value of V in versus the maximum value of V out. Um, you could do it with the zero crossing point here and here, or you could do it with the minimums. It's up to you how you do it. Um, I just do this because it's easier to start from the closest to the vertical axis as I can really. Um, this is meant to be the maximum. It's a little bit difficult in PowerPoint to draw lines in the correct position. You'd be a lot more accurate doing it on pen and paper. So now we've identified our points on the wave that we want to compare. What we need to do is find what the value of this separation is. So I've just drawn down and I'm using these space definitions that we've defined before. Um, it helps that these waves are of the same frequency, so these spacings are the same. The problems you'll be given to solve at this level will have the same frequency. It makes life a lot easier and further work will see what happens when these are different. So one cycle of a wave is distance of 2 pi, half of that is pi over 2, we've got pi and pi by 4. So these labels have got mixed up. Obviously, that's pi and that's pi by 2. So slight correction there. 
But if we look at what the size of this gap is, is we can see that the difference is between pi and 3 pi by 2. So that means it's somewhere between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. That's what this separation is. So what I'm going to do is just going to estimate the value to be about halfway between the two, which would make it 225 degrees. Now we've got that value, we want to know which one is leading and which one is lagging. Well, if we look at the let's sit at the vertical axis, and we're going to see which waveform hits the maximum first. And we can see that the one that hits the maximum first is actually V in of T. That's maximum first, and then after our phase shift, we're seeing that V out of T is then reaching its maximum. So we can see that V in leads V out by 225 degrees. However, we said before, we don't really like to have values that are greater than 180 degrees. So we're going to convert our 225 degree value into a less than 180 degree value. So if we do 360 minus 225, we get 135, but the value is now negative. That's the direction of the phase shift. So if we're just thinking about it. Sketch it out on a uh, argand diagram if you're not comfortable with that jump. But I've been over it in the earlier problem sheet solution, so I'm not going to go over it in a huge amount of detail here. So what we've ended up with saying is that we've got several different ways to express what this waveform is. We can say that our first answer was that Vn of t leads V out of T by 225 degrees. But we wanted to convert this into a more conventional form. So we can say V in of T leads V out of T by minus 135 degrees. That was just the pure conversion we did. However, when we have a minus phase shift, it indicates a lag. So we're basically saying it's leading by minus 135, which indicates a lag. So we're going to rewrite the statement so it's a lot more concise again, it's less confusing. So our final answer is that V out of T leads V in of T by 135 degrees. So we've got rid of this negative sign, sorry, we've got rid of this negative sign and we've flipped the leads, sorry, we've flipped the position so we've now got V in of T is over here. So these positions have swapped to make it more correct. Um, so that's the answer. The interesting point about the waveform I've chosen is there was a reason for it. So these are based on values that you do actually get out of guitar amplifiers. The frequency that we're interested in here is actually um, the frequency of middle C. That's what I plotted this as. So middle C is actually a frequency of 262 degrees. And you can do quite a cool thing in Wolfram Alpha is you can play a sine wave of 262 Hertz and we can hear what that sounds like so you type it in you say play and specify what you want it to play and you can press play sound and you can hear the sound and hopefully QuickTime won't ask you up to, to update so it's just a pure tone um, it doesn't sound a lot like music, but that's the tuning frequency. And if you think that the actual sound you'll hear from an instrument actually has a whole range of harmonics into the tone as well, you'll very rarely hear just that pure tone because it doesn't sound very good. Um, the area of music synthesis and the mathematics and the engineering behind it is a massive field of study that you have a chance to look at more in your future studies. So here's a useful frequency of some musical notes if you want to have a look. Um, just to mention, um, the, the, the tone that you hear is dependent on the frequency. That doesn't change with the phase shift. So both of these will sound exactly the same tone. It's just that one will obviously sound louder. But that was the whole point of amplifying it. Okay, so that's the end of the example sheet one. Um, congratulations.